this uh, morning's video is a subscriber request and it regards the pros and cons of inbreeding. But to do that, I will also uh, touch the other types of breeding in this topic. So I will also touch upon outcrossing, scatter breeding, and line breeding, and actually inbreeding. So first of all, some definitions. Inbreeding. Inbreeding is breeding back on one specific uh, dog and doing that in quite an intense way. So the relationship with line breeding is that inbreeding is a lot more intense on one specific dog, especially sometimes several specific dogs, but mostly, especially one. I will give some examples of inbreeding as compared to line breeding. An inbreeding could be if you have a father uh, crossed with a mother, of course, that results in a daughter, and then you breed back that daughter to the father again. The resulting pups are then 75% uh, the father, and you are inbreeding upon the father. An example of looser inbreeding that is more towards line breeding is that you have the same combination eh? father here yeah, mother that results in a daughter and then you cross it with another dog that results in a in a granddaughter and then the granddaughter is uh, again combined with that original father which so the granddaughter is, compa is combined with the grandfather and that is more of a line breeding, inbreeding. Or an inbreeding that is less strict, it depends a little bit on your uh, definition. And why is that so? Because also in line breeding you have an inbreeding coefficient. So an inbreeding coefficient will tell you something about the genetic diversity. So the higher they are, the less genetic diversity. And this is, in general, <coughs> a bad thing. But there are some pros and that's of course, as well. So being, in general, a bad thing is because you are losing, now it says Jacob's letters in the sky, you're losing genetic diversity and if you have nothing to add to that normally a dog breed would deter and why are there some benefits involved also with inbreeding well if you're inbreeding upon an exceptional individual you will get more of that exceptional individual's traits so for example if that exceptional individual is very fast and you're inbreeding on that fast individual, you're likely to get also very fast pups out of that, perhaps even faster, because by inbreeding you can also increase the chance that those good genes find each other and also click in some way. So in a short sentence, what does inbreeding bring? It brings you a lot more uh, stability in the result. Another thing is that mainly inbreeding is sneered upon because they see a lot of uh, troubles in show dogs or they think that uh, their purebred show dog is a lot better than that father-daughter combination but they might be very wrong. And why is that? Because if you have a show dog Normally those show dogs have not been tested to be worth it instead of just looking nice. Another thing is that almost all show dogs are the result of inbreeding. To a high degree, for example, you have some breeds that are approaching 
85% inbreeding coefficient. That is utterly insane. If you would have like uh, 12 times subsequent after each other um, inbreeding of the father to the daughter and then etc. So the, the granddaughter of that again to the father etc. Then you would still, Goedemorgen, still have a lot less than 85% that you see in some dog breeds. And an example of those dog breeds that have an insane high inbreeding are Lundehund. You can look that up. So that's giving you some background. So a father or daughter would you only be giving you an inbreeding coefficient of like 25%. And still a lot higher than you would like but it's <laughs> nowhere near that 85 percent and that's 11 or 12 generations as i mentioned will give you like 50 or 55 percent coefficient of inbreeding so it's a little bit yeah we call that hypocrite if you think that that, that your dog is so much better that's one. And the other thing is, if that father was an exceptional animal or is an exceptional animal, you still have the benefits of that exceptional animal that you don't have in that uh, normal show dog that's already higher inbreeding altogether. The nice puppies, huh? Beautiful, beautiful puppies. Love them. Very uh, tender. Then there's uh, something else, and that is inbreeding is next to in the show breeding world of course also uh, in show breeding they use the inbreeding to refine them eh? as they say not refining it's just exaggerating some traits that they have to divide them from other dogs that are related uh, for example a flatter face in the english bulldog as compared to the Staffordshire bull terrier to an enormous degree if you look at the old English Bulldogs, they look more, a lot more than like the current Sebastian Bull Terriers. Same with the Massino Napolitano. The Massino Napolitano of the old days looked a lot more like uh, the Cane Corso of today. So that gives you some insight. And the Cane Corso of the, yeah, the past looked a lot more like a, a bull lurcher or a massive um, Greyhound cross. But that being said, there are some things that you uh, will also get. And that is next to the benefit, benefits you can gain from inbreeding, eh? so more reliable and higher chance of some exceptional, exceptional traits if you're inbreeding to an exceptional dog, that you also get drawback, such as inbreeding depression so what is that inbreeding depression is the result of yeah, high inbreeding so to say and then you get for example less uh, long-lived dogs you can also get dogs that are not that uh, fertile that they have problems to uh, get uh, normal size litters, etc., or uh, limited sperm count, and already in the first uh, father-daughter cross, you can diminish a little bit of the age. It also depends on the health of the dog you're inbreeding to. Of, of course, it's not, if that is an exceptional health, for example, if the average of the breed is 12 years without inbreeding. <laughs> You have a dog to live to 18 in a good health and you're inbreeding on that dog of course you can still get a very good uh, long livity prospects out of that so that, that can also give you an indication so the the opposite of um, inbreeding would be scatter breeding so just breeding all those dogs together and also a lot of times people think this is the best because those muds, so to say, you can also have a mud in a specific breed because it doesn't have consistency, you just breed it 
all over the place have a lot more genetic diversity and therefore could be better in living a long age etc and if you just there for a house dog without a performance needs this can be a good bet huh? but there are also drawbacks to that because the consistency will also diminish and you don't know ex exactly what you're getting especially if multiple breeds are involved all the time <coughs> so what's the benefit of line breeding you get a lot of the benefits of inbreeding but because you do this in a looser way so to say you just breed on the line of the dogs or the parent of that dog oh, you can also involve those then you have a lot less pheasant on that uh, the bigger bulb now it goes down you have a lot of the benefits without the drawbacks to the same degree so of course it will be a little bit harder to have the consistency that you could easily get with, uh, with inbreeding but also you have the benefit that you don't have to cross air the pheasant is see in the middle of the screen a nice big pheasant huh? see Brindley? I just wanted to show this. He's now a little bit reluctant. But uh, you have a lot of the benefits without the drawbacks to the same degree. So what you are getting is a line. And sometimes the parents of the exceptional animal are better than the exceptional animal itself. Because they were able to produce an exceptional animal. Whereas the exceptional animal, you don't know for sure if they can produce the same and by adding these uh, multiple layers of genetic diversity but still uh, along the sides of that specific line uh, you will have a lot of the benefits namely the consistency will be high the genetic diversity will be higher than inbreeding so also a lot less inbreeding depression that being said even carefully selected lines are often in need of an out and that will also introduce another aspect of breeding being the outcross so what does an out mean so every time you breed in the line it is an in being in breeding or just staying within the line yeah? both have the in in it and then if you take an out an outcross to a different line that is also very consistent for example and could, could be an inbreeding result of a different line eh? could be within the same species of course then you can have new blood added and still keep the consistency and it's a great benefit because you will have all the benefits of this line breeding inbreeding program that gives you the consistency but when there are some drawbacks, for example, inbreeding depression that are uh, halting your line or you're lacking some strength or other things then the outcross to a dog or a line that doesn't have that drawbacks that much or has a nice genetic click as uh, been proven in the past could give you that hybrid figure again so you get new genes introduced the hybrid figure oftentimes produce exceptional animals in the first generation therefore i also told you it's not that much an exceptional animal will also produce exceptional animals it could be that their parents are the better way to go and after this this outcross is f1 outcross between these two inbred lines then they go in again so into the one of the parent lines so for example you have line A, you output across to line B and the result, the AB, you cross into A again. So then you have 75% A line and just 25% of the B line and you can have multiple generations crossing it back into the A line again without big inbreeding depression. And that gives you a big benefit as a breeder of course. Outcrossing will 
oftentimes result in exceptional animals, but if you're not breeding them into the one of the parent lines again and would outcross again to another line that's not related, you will be scatter breeding after a while and you will lose consistency in performance as well. It doesn't mean that those dogs cannot live a nice long life and could be good uh, pets, but as a performance dog, enthusiasts it will be a little bit harder on yourself. So that also brings you probably at a point, what would I advise? I would advise exactly where I ended off with, to have a line that produces the dogs that are closest to what you want, uh, in a performance sense, and if you have those, look for a good outcross, so when the time comes that you can uh, go out. There's another thing, for example in working terriers, the out can also be a completely different breed. So for example, sometimes Petadel terriers have an out towards the Lakeland terrier, towards the Border terrier or to watch, for example, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier if they are lacking strength or lacking size because also inbreeding depression very often brings down the size again so if you, so if you have an outcross potential which will increase the size this can be beneficial because one of the factors, if that is uh, of relevance to your specific breeding uh, program could be that after a while the size is declining a lot and if you have a certain type of dogs that need a big size for example a man stopper type of dog or a hawk dog a catch dog type then it would be nice that you in the outcourse will get a little bit bigger dogs than the dogs that you want to end up with and if you then are inbreeding again or line breeding again and i prefer line breeding because the factors that I told you, then you can do this for quite a while before you need another out due to size restrictions while line breeding too much. So I hope this video was insightful and also answered the question of the subscriber or as some more. Have a great day.